test, test, check. Checking, one, two, three. Uh, we're diving right in. We are diving right in. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 58 of the Brent Pella Show. Uh, solo episode this week. I hope you enjoyed the last couple of episodes with um, a couple of guests. My buddy Luke Knoll, who spent a season on Saturday Night Live. Uh, my good friend Leah Lamar, a.k.a. the Queen of Clubhouse. Um, I am trying to rest my voice a little bit because it was, uh, it was on the way out after doing a bunch of shows in Nashville last weekend. Um, so forgive me if it sounds like I'm just trying to seduce you this whole episode. I mean, I guess I kind of am trying to seduce you, uh, at all times, but, um, in this episode in particular, also I just drank coffee really fast and now I can't stop (coughs) coughing. Sorry. That was gross. It's not COVID. It's coffee. Uh, it's coffee 19. Um, but Hey man, thanks for chilling. Thanks for coming to hang. Uh, this episode is brought to you by, um, Cognibiotics from Bioptimizers, my favorite supplement company, Cognibiotics in particular, uh, they're branded as a mind and mood enhancing probiotic, which sounds like the drug from the movie limitless with Bradley Cooper. If you haven't seen it, highly recommended. Um, but I really like these, uh, they, they're, they're made from a blend of natural herbs, and uh, other uh, uh, good high-vibe ingredients um, that just kind of give your brain a little kickstart, give your brain a little boost. You know, it's probiotics, and and the uh, correlation between your gut and your brain is a very real thing. Um, So a healthy gut is a healthy, happy mind, and uh, that's what Cognibiotics does for me. So you can go to cognibiotics.com slash Brent Pella. That's C-O-G-N-I biotics.com slash Brent Pella. Get a discount on your purchase and they'll send you a free, um, blueprint optimization health book thing. Uh, remember how good I am at reading ads. Here we go, baby. Also blue blocks, my favorite blue blocking, blue light blocking glasses. Uh, get 15% off at blueblocks.com slash Brent using promo code Brent. And, uh, I wear those glasses every night when I'm watching TV or on, on the computer, staring at my phone before bed. Um, as, uh, y- your doctor actually recommends you stare at a phone before bed. Did you know this? This is a true thing. Don't censor me, YouTube, for medical inf- misinformation again. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, blueblocks.com slash Brent. Get 50% off your order of my favorite blue light blocking glasses. Um, and sleep better and treat your eyes with some love. Okay? And also, just for fun, this episode is brought to you by this cool hat I'm wearing. It says Sativa on it. Shout out to my boy Brad Sativa. I just met out in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. He was hosting the shows that JP and I were on this weekend at Zany's in Nashville. Um, super cool dude. Dope merch. Fun name. Last name Sativa. Great guy. Go support him. Sativa. Love you, bro. Um, man, what a what a weird past couple of weeks I've had. Suspended from YouTube. Your boy got... Sus- dude, I don't know if I've ever even been suspended from class. Like, as a kid, I don't think I was ever suspended. Was I? Was I ever suspended? I think I might have gotten, like, in-house detention once for, like, pantsing someone um, in the quad. Worth it. Definitely worth it. Um, But YouTube suspended me for that video uh, when conspiracy bros go to the doctor. And it was funny because, like, that video was created to mock the extremists who think that there's a microchip in the vaccine. There's not. Okay. That's insane. All right. There are plenty of other reasons people who don't want to get the vax will not get the vax. The microchip is, is like the most absurd thing that I can think of. Um, and so in the video, we talked about how the vaccine has Pringles chips in it and YouTube said, you're spreading medical misinformation and we appealed it. I appealed it. Um, I talked to my buddy who works with a a production studio that has a direct tie to YouTube. He got in touch with somebody at YouTube. That guy was like, sorry, dude, nothing we could do. It's just the way it is. And it's like, Hey man, are there actually Pringles chips in the vaccine then? Like what, what, how, what, what, why would this be the reason spreading met when it's so obvious that we're mocking the people that you would think YouTube would want you to mock. 
but instead they're like hiding that from people. And, uh, something we got back from the YouTube people was, um, oh, well people might think you're, might think it's serious. People might actually believe that the vaccine has Pringles chips in it. And that like, what? Like I, it blew my mind, bro. Because now that, that means that YouTube has become, or is, uh, moving into a space where YouTube will be the decider of what people should and should not believe. Like they control, like they control, um, what can be consumed and what cannot be consumed based on their own definition of truth. And how we're not going to let people do their own research into whether or not, uh, the vaccine has snack foods in it. You know what I mean? We're not gonna let the we're not gonna trust people to come to the conclusion that no, the vaccine does not have Pringles potato chips in it. That's gonna have to be YouTube's job. It's just insane, dude. So they suspended your boy for a week, but now we're back, and it's all good. Um, and the video lives on Instagram and Facebook still. So if you haven't seen it, you can go watch it on my Instagram and on my Facebook. Um, surprised they didn't take that away. Also, my buddy Ryan Long just made a video called is the vaccine turning rabbis gay <laughs> and it was like it's the silliest video he him and his buddy dressed up as rabbis in new york and walked around as two rabbis who had just gotten the vaccine and it made them extremely gay um and that's still on youtube so i don't know I don't know what's going on, man. I don't know if they got if they got eyes out for me or if I was on somebody's shit list or if it was just an unlucky moment. I, I don't I don't know how all that stuff works, but I'm happy Ryan's video has not gotten taken down yet. Go watch Ryan's video if you haven't seen that yet. Just the vaccine turning rabbis gay. Is it? Does it have Pringles chips in it? I don't know, dude. I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, the vaccine hype is so crazy, man. The 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 societal pressure is uh is truly insane. It's truly crazy and it's making people crazy. I saw somebody post the other day, uh anybody who doesn't get the vaccine should be forced to wear like a pin on their chest and alert their neighbors and be treated the same as um uh, uh sex offenders. This is a real this is somebody's real argument uh on Twitter the other day. And it's like Damn, man, that's that's the that's the pressure you're gonna be putting on people. I have no dog in this fight. I will never tell anybody to get it or not to get it. I am not speaking. I've, I'm choosing to remove myself from that conversation entirely. I truly do not give a fuck. But if I, I but I do not think people who don't get it should be treated like sex offenders, dude. And then I have a friend in LA who's a comedian. And uh, he posted on Facebook um, a picture of people at a at a uh, uh, anti-vax or was it an anti-vax rally? It was a couple of people with signs that said like um, "Speak up for the vaccine injured." Uh, somebody else had a sign that said like um, "I was injured by a vaccine" or da 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 da. And he he wrote, "Look at these fucking idiots." And it's like, man, that you're you're gonna just default to such a negative without like doing any research into what those people have to say. I'm not even I'm not anti. I've had all the vaccines since I was a kid, and I'm sure my kids will get them too. And but it's like I you can still empathize with people who are trying to make a a a, a valid point about something. These people weren't holding signs that said the vaccine is gonna turn you into a reptile. They were, it, it seemed like they were trying to get a message across based on their own personal experience. And then here's my buddy posting on Facebook, calling them, just generalizing them as fucking idiots. Um, because that's what you do when you're scared to have a debate. That's what you do when you're simple minded and uh, you have no ability to create a dialogue and, and, and empathize with somebody else's perspective, even if you can't agree with, even if you're not going to agree with it, you can still empathize with it and hear it out. But instead we call people names like fucking idiots or fascist or fucking conspiracy theorists so that we can avoid conversation. It's very sad. It's a bummer. Um, 
But, uh, you know, uh, get it if you want, I guess. I don't know. Fuck that. I don't care. Um, the passport issue is, uh, is, is interesting. I, I do not think that'll work. I think there's too many people in America that will, um, that will be like, no, fuck all that noise. That ain't gonna happen. And then also like, it's so easy to have a fake vaccine card. And it's also, I I was just reading the other day that like more than 30% of vaccinations are not, have not been, uh, entered electronically. So like they, they, they keep track of the numbers, but they don't keep track of who has gotten it um, at a lot of like Walgreens and drive through places and stuff like that. So I don't know how all that'll work, but I, it doesn't seem like a good idea um, for the passport. Uh, hey, man, Nashville was super fun. I will be in Utah this coming weekend in Kanab, K-A-N-A-B, Kanab, Utah, middle of nowhere, Utah, baby. Very excited. Um to be in fucking this part of Utah. It'll be fun. Uh, and then where else? Oh, Lodi sold out. Lodi is sold out on April 23rd and 24th. Um, super excited for those shows. <coughs> Very excited to get back up to Lodi um, at Peltier Winery. That's going to be so fun. May 20th through 22nd, I'll be in Philly. Uh, and then June... Um, Nothing in June because I'm doing something special in June that I'll tell you about in the future. Uh, July, a bunch of other stuff in July. Everything else at brentpella.com slash shows. Oh, oh, Austin. Austin, Texas, baby. Your boy is coming. Your boy is coming to Austin, Texas, dude. Yes. Very excited. That is uh, May 12th and 13th. Hey, man. Um, For the 17 people that listen to this podcast, if any of you 17 people live in Austin, Texas, here's the info. Wednesday, May 12th at La Condesa, 400 West 2nd Street, Wednesday, May 12th, and then Thursday, May 13th at 4th & Co., 208 West 4th Street, Thursday, May 13th. Um, So that's the 12th and 13th of May. Your boy's coming to play. Uh, Very excited. I'm going to run through a bunch of new material and uh, fuck around. It's going to be a really fun time. Very excited for those shows. Um, Nashville was great, dude. Went out to Nashville I uh, had a bunch of shows at Zany's and uh, met Nicole Arbor, um, who we had only known each other through interactions on Instagram previously. And uh, wow, what a nice person. Holy shit. Nicole, I love you. She's so cool. She's so nice, sweetheart, genuine, very kind, um, very funny, awesome person. And we shot a bunch of videos with uh, Man and Matthews, another new friend that I've only interacted with. <laughs> it's really fun to, to like meet people offline and find out, Oh, this person's super cool. Like it's like, it's, it's so refreshing because you, you feel like, I, or at least I do a lot of the times seeing people on, on the internet, you're like, Oh, this is a fake person. This person isn't real. This is just like a whole, um, facade that they're putting on. Right. And then you meet the, but, but like almost every single person I've met in real life, that I had met online first has been like cool as shit. Stevie Emerson, I, I first started DMing him online a couple of years ago before we met in real life. Um, and then Manon and Nicole and a couple other people, Nikki. Uh, so it's, it's great, man. It's cool uh, that a lot of these people are real. And I think it's partly being a comedian because um, I wonder if it would be the same if, if you're like a musician. Maybe it would, but I feel like there's a little more ego in, uh, in other performance arts, you know, but as a comedian, I feel like we kind of break our ego down here. That's my ego talking about how much I don't have an ego compared to other people's egos. Very meta for you. Uh, that was fun, man. Nashville was fun. Um, basically lost my voice. The shows were great. Uh, dude, I do, <laughs> I do, a um, I do a QAnon joke on stage. Uh, cause QAnon is bullshit as, as you've heard me say, many times before and you know uh it's uh the 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 nashville shows in particular i feel like there might have been a lot of q people in the crowd um and there was a tension in the room i just watched the QAnon documentary and you know you know what's funny about QAnon is like when when I first heard about it and I watched that fucking uh, Fall of the Cabal 
documentary, right? About how there's a bunch of Satanist pedophiles eating babies. I was like, oh, this makes sense. <laughs> I was like, wait, yeah. Like it's so easy to get to get um, kind of like pseudo brainwashed into that shit if you're just watching it for the first time. I mean, m for me, it lasted like 20, all of 20 minutes before I just went through and like debunked it myself. Uh, you know, there's a lot of evil people and like bad people and terrible things happening. Um, but I'm not, <laughs> not on board with the adrenochrome uh, <laughs> stuff. Uh, especially after watching this documentary, man. But anyways, it's, it's, it was, it was funny. Cause I was talking to my buddy, Aristotle, who goes by Blake Weber online, um, maybe eight months ago. And we were both like, dude, like, what if it is true? Like, <laughs> like what we were, we were, um, we were entertaining the possibility that all of the Q stuff could be true, uh, without jumping fully on board. And we, we were like, it was like, it's like easy to be convinced by that shit because there's so many little pieces that you can just line up and so many little coincidences that seem legit. Um, but, do, and then, but if you watch the documentary on HBO called Q into the storm, that's really all you need to jump off of that fucking sinking ship. Okay. Because Q it's, it's the, it's the dude, it's the, it's the, um, the fucking guy, what's his name? Uh, Ron Watkins. It's some 30-year-old weirdo who loves porn that lives in Japan. And he's just toying with people. He's fucking with people. And he, he talking to Roger Stone and Michael Flynn and getting some like bullshit intel information and repurposing it and sharing it as a drop. And millions of people have ruined their lives and lost their fucking minds, dude. So... If, uh, you know, if you're still into Q, hey, man, I respect your belief, okay? You can you can believe in it all you want. We can still be friends. I'll still be friends with you. I'll still be, don't bring it up unless you want to, unless you want to be beaten down verbally, okay? And don't bring it up unless you've seen the, the HBO documentary. But the craziest thing with Q is like the more you prove that it's fake and bullshit, the more QAnon people will will like dig their heels in and figure out a way to make it true. They'll try to flip all those uh, reasons you're proving it wrong into reasons that it's actually right. It's a mind fuck, dude. It is a total mind fuck. And I, uh, I, I did a bit about it um, on stage and there was tension in the room. There was tension in the room, dude. And it's a different tension. You, you make fun of Trump in front of Trump supporters and they'll laugh. They'll laugh. You, you make fun of Biden in front of Biden supporters. Eh, they don't laugh as much. But as soon as you make fun of Trump and Biden in front of Biden supporters, then you get some more laughs. But you make fun of Q in front of Q people. There's no laughter. That's like making fun of, um, you know, Jesus in front of hardcore Christians. There's like, it's blasphemy, man. Um, so it was wild. Uh, but I am excited to continue to make fun of Q at every fucking show I possibly can because that shit is just so insane. But again, you're allowed to believe in it. You can. I don't care. My 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 life purpose is not to prove QAnon wrong, okay? <laughs> that is not my life mission. Uh I have a, a couple other missions that come before that. Um hey man, how about a cop uh not knowing the difference between a fucking gun and a taser? How about that? How about that? A cop that doesn't know the difference between a fucking gun and a fucking taser. Dude. Dude. Insane. Even let's let's pretend that that's true. Let's pretend now now one one side of the people about the killing of Dante Wright. Okay? One one side of the people um one one side of one side of this thinks that the, the cop meant to kill him. And knew it was a gun. The other side thinks, no, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. She thought she was reaching for her taser. Hey, either way, go to jail. 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 Either way. And never, ever be allowed in the same room as a gun for the rest of your life in case you mistake it for a fucking banana. 
and shoot someone else, dude. This woman is, to me, bad at being a person. Not just bad at being a cop. Bad at being a person. I talked to a police officer friend uh, uh, yesterday, and he was like, dude, if you mistake a, a gun for a taser as a police officer, not only have you had terrible training, but you should be locked in prison for a long time because you're, 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 and never allowed in any type of law enforcement ever. Like this is, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. There's a whole New York times article on the differences between the police issued taser and the police issued gun that she had the weight. There's like a, a 10 plus ounce difference, the feel, the materials, the trigger, the color of the thing. Like when you're, Oh my God, it's insane to me. And then she resigned. She shouldn't have been allowed to resign. She should not have been allowed to resign. She should have been fired on the spot. The, the protection for cops is too much. I feel like the protection for cops is way too much because they get, they get away with shit way too often and can chalk things up to mistakes because they're protect, protected by unions, protected by their partners who will testify for them, protected by all these different level layers of protection. And they're, I mean, why are they, they get so protected, but then the family of the person who's accidentally killed by a gun because the cop thought it was a taser gets no protection. And it's like, it's, it's mind numbing. It's so, so, so crazy. So, um, I have zero empathy for this woman, like none whatsoever. She should rot in prison for a long time um, and uh, never be allowed to touch a gun again, ever, ever. That right gets taken away when you can't tell the difference and your job is to know the difference. Then your right gets taken away. Uh, and all the Second Amendment people, you know, I believe in the Second, Second Amendment too, but not for somebody who can't tell the difference between a gun and a taser. I don't. That's where I draw the line. You're a police officer. You don't know the difference between a gun and a taser and you remove a life from planet earth. No sympathy, no sympathy, jail time, go to jail. Ha <laughs> ha jail time. Bye. Speaking of jail, how about the black lives matter woman that bought, um, millions of dollars worth of mansions and shit. That's crazy, dude. And she got called out by Hawk Newsom. Hawk Newsom's a New York city, uh, head of Black Lives Matter. And even he was like, no, we need to do an investigation into her. Patrice, what was her name? Something like that. Hawk Newsom called her out. And um, the other guy who, Tamir Rice, was that somebody's dad, uh, somebody's dad, oh, shit. Um, some, I forgot, I forget the article, but <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the woman who bought the houses for millions of dollars in rich white neighborhoods, she still hasn't commented on that, by the way, which is so absurd. And when you're getting called out by your own organization, you know, you're messing up big time. You know, you're messing up big time. Okay. When you're, when you're profiting off of a movement and the movement is saying, Hey, this is wrong. So, um, that's so fucked up, dude. And there was somebody, I got to find this because it, he said that she, she had never, somebody's the victim of a, oh, God damn it. Okay. Hang on. Just stick with me. I got to find this article. Maybe it's in my history earlier today. No, Monday. Uh, da, 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 da. um, because somebody has a, uh, uh, fund that, never received any money from black lives matter and then called her out for spending millions and millions of dollars. Oh, I got to find this dude. Otherwise I just sound like a fucking conspiracy theorist. Uh, uh, which is house BLM money. Hawk Newsom. Hmm. Maybe it's this one. Uh, 
Hawk Newsome, da 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 Patrice. Yeah, she bought so much money, dude. She uh, cannot and did not commit any resources, da 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 It's just not a good look, dude. Even if she spent her own money, like, as a self-proclaimed Marxist, so she's a self-proclaimed Marxist who now owns millions of dollars worth of property in rich white neighborhoods. You would think that she, if she was a Marxist and and a purporter of uh, a supporter of socialism, would start like a commune or something. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, Michael Brown Sr., whose son Michael Brown Jr. was killed by police in Ferguson, Missouri, in 2014 says, why hasn't my family's foundation received any assistance from the movement? On behalf of many activists in the St. Louis area, I'm joined by Mike Brown Sr. Today, we hold Black Lives Matter accountable. Wow. This is on AOL.com. The article is called BLM founder Patrice Coulor's $1.4 million home draws criticism. Call for investigation. So yeah, dude, like, fuck, man. I... I I, the, the fundamental part of the BLM movement is what I support, what I, what I interpreted it was originally, uh, is what I still support is, uh, an end to unnecessary police violence and brutality and, um, and bringing an end to, uh, aspects of systemic racism that are, still uh visible in the judicial system and the prison system uh and you know you can disagree with that because i know some of you guys do and it's all good dude we can disagree we can live our lives disagreeing um but now but like that seems to have transformed now and there's so much money in the movement and when you have people like um when you have people like hawk newsome calling out one of the leaders Hawk Newsom being the the leader of the New York BLM movement, head of Black Lives Matter of Greater New York, is calling for a probe into colors finances. So when someone like that is calling into uh, calling into a calling in a probe, and when someone like Michael Brown Sr. is is calling out Black Lives Matter uh, for not following through on promises to support his foundation after his son was killed by police. Raise a lot of questions, objective questions, like objective concerns. These seem like very objective concerns. These these are not, this is not like calling BLM a terrorist fucking group. This is not some crazy conspiracy. It's like, hey man, look at the people that, look at the people calling them out. It's the people that are actually part of the movement. And they're like, hey, there's some weird shit going on right now. I don't know, dude. This world's crazy. I don't know anything anymore, <laughs> bro. I did, my whole belief system is so fucked. It's so fucked. My, my brain just gets pulled and like, dude, I feel like my brain gets pulled in like 10 different directions every day. Reading headlines. I got people sending me articles in the DMS. I got, I got people sending me articles about communist takeovers, about how the vaccine was like planned about how, uh, you know, uh, uh, Biden is, is like actually dead about dude. <laughs> I got people sending me so much shit. It's hard to stay sane, bro. And then I got people sending me stuff about how like all Republicans are pedos. The Matt Gatz thing. Where's Q for all that shit, dude? Huh? Matt Gatz. Where, where's, where's the Republicans speaking up about that? You know what I mean? Damn, dude. My mind is melted, bro. My mind is melted. I thought 2021 was going to be like an evening out time. Chill time, big chill time. Uh-uh. 2021 is like the last 30 seconds in the microwave, bro, when the popcorn gets bur- gets burned. It's what my brain feels like. It's crazy. It's so wild. Um, what else, man? I hope you guys like that new video about uh, basketball in California. Um, I can't believe the hoops are still locked up in Los Angeles. It is so fucking stupid to me. Eric Garcetti is such an idiot. Why... How are we going to have professional sports playing everywhere? Also, all over California. Uh, and LA isn't even the worst, doesn't even have the worst COVID numbers right now. And yet, we can't play basketball outside when the sun's out. 
and get the vitamin D that we want. And still, still, there has been zero, zero um, advice on vitamins and minerals and nutrients that can specifically help boost your immune system, specifically to fight variants of COVID. Instead, it's just two masks, four masks, 10 masks. And it's like, dude, how about all of it? Give us all the information, dude. Give us all the information, okay? Sure, I'll believe you if you, if you say two masks are good. But why the fuck aren't you saying zinc and vitamin C, huh? That's, that's, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's gonna, it's better than two masks. Fine. I've never worn two masks. You know, that's also just silly at this point. But to, to, to specifically give, um, select information and not, the full context of information is insane. It's like saying, yeah, 15 year olds can die from COVID. So everybody should get vaccinated. No, uh, that's like the last piece of that information. Why, why aren't you giving all the information such as here's the percentage of people that die at age 15 from getting COVID here? Like give all, give all the information. We're not getting all the information. My brain, dude, it's getting pulled, bro. You know what my brain feels like? My brain feels like, you know, uh, in those candy stores where you see the taffy getting pulled like up and down by the big metal arms. That's what my brain feels like. Yeah. That's what my brain has felt like since June of last year. Since June, 2020, my brain has been taffy. My brain has been taffy. Just a big thing of taffy. That's what my brain is. My brain is taffy. My brain is taffy now. Oh, crazy. What else, man? How about something fun, huh? Something fun. Something fun. Let's end with something fun, man. Something fun, dude. What's something fun? It's April, you know? Uh, what do I have coming up, man? I do have something really fun in June that I wish I could tell you guys about, but I don't want to say anything because you never know what could happen out here in Hollywood. Um, what else? What else, dude? Uh, cooking. Cook. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, I saw, um, white claw coming out with a new fucking, uh, a new, um, I got to stop cussing. Why do I cuss so much? I think it's cause I'm, I just feel so comfortable and relaxed, but I think I should stop cursing so much. White claw is coming out with a new, um, uh, fl- uh, can a, a new drink that's 3% more alcohol. And a lot of people are like, Ooh, it's like the four loco. It's going to be like the four loco. Uh, uh-uh. nothing will ever be like the original four loco. <laughs> Dude, the original four loco was literally gasoline and moonshine in a can carbonated. It was gasoline and moonshine with bubbles. That's what the original four loco was. I grew up on the original four loco, the one with the caffeine. Nothing will ever be the original Four Loco, dude. The original Four Loco was like it, like the closest thing to a Schedule 1 drug that you could buy at a 7-Eleven. It, it was liquid meth. It was straight up Capri Sun on crack. It was crazy. We drank Four and we drank it, dude. In high school, I think I had my first alcoholic drink at... 16, <coughs> maybe 15. Um, and I, 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 it was for loco. That's what it was. And man, we put that shit down, dude. I've took years off my life. I wonder if anybody has an original one. There's gotta be like a case out there somewhere of the original for loco. Uh, but dude, that stuff was insane. It, it like kind of made you trip a little bit. Like it, 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 Cause it was, it was caffeinated, but it also had like, was it malt? It was like a malt beverage. So it was like a caffeine, caffeine, beer, malt liquor type vibe. I don't know, man. That shit was like electricity in a can straight to the brain. Nothing will ever be like the original four loco. (laughs) Um, guys, that's it, man. Uh, thank you so much for chilling and listening to my weird opinions and, and watching my brain go full laffy taffy on your ass. Um, a lot of shows coming up this summer, brentpella.com slash shows. So, uh, if you're in Austin, come through May 12th and 13th, come kick it. We're going to have a good time. 
and uh, anywhere else. Um, hopefully coming to see you soon, man. Uh, feel free to drop your city in the comments and uh, I will post and, and continue to promote when I have more shows coming up. And um, hey, man, I love you so much. Okay. Hey, go tell someone else you love them. All right. And let's, uh, let's just, let's just keep being nice to people. You know, let's just keep being nice to people. Let's do that. That's fun. Yeah, let's do that. Let's be nice to people. Okay, guys, have a good week. Bye-bye.